Hey you guys! Today we have this big display from MakerBase. It's beautiful and fully loaded with features. You want to know more? Stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! But before we start, please don't forget to hit like on this video and if you are not a subscriber yet, please click on the subscribe button so you can follow all our work. And if you like our work and wish to help the channel, please join our Patreon page or click on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, a few videos back, we talked about Octoprint and explained how you can install it using a small Raspberry Pi and use it with your printer. Today, we will show you a slightly different approach, introducing the Pad7 from MakerBase. It's an Android platform with a 7-inch touch display and includes many features such as G-Code visualizer, remote control, internal slicing, and more. The package includes the pad, the touch panel, a USB cable, a flat cable, and a small heatsink. And here is the main component. At the front, we have the big 7-inch display, but it's at the back where all the magic happens. The main board is the small one located near the center of the pad, and it's equipped with an ARM quad-core Cortex-A7 CPU. There are many connectors all around the pad, but unfortunately, many of them are not yet ready to use. Here at the corner, we have the input power connections. We can use the black connector if we decide to use a power brick to power the pad or this green screw type connector if we decide to use the printer's power supply to power the pad. If you decide to use an external power supply, make sure it can provide between 12 to 24 volts and 3 amps. Next, we have a couple of switches. Switch number one is the reset button and switch number two is for power off. And here we have the USB connector to plug in an external camera. If we want to connect the pad to the printer using the flat cable, this is where we connect that cable. Next, we have the speaker connector, a couple of filament runout sensor inputs, the power detection input, and the power off connector. Here at the right side, we have a small area for a backup battery normally is included, but due to transportation restrictions, they could not include the lithium battery inside the package. We can buy one locally and solder the positive and negative leads here. The battery will allow the pad to keep on running during a power cut. At the left, we have a Type-B USB connector that we can use to connect the pad to the printer and a few extension connections. At the top, we have a Type-A USB connector that we can use to connect a flash drive or to connect the pad to the printer. We also have the memory card reader and a small micro USB connection. Also at the top, you have the Wi-Fi antenna. There are two ways to connect the pad to the printer, by USB cable or with a flat cable. If your printer is equipped with a USB connector, use this one instead. Okay. Enough talk, let's connect the pad and test it out. To test the pad, we will use our TiVo Neros, and we will use the printer's power supply to power the pad. To make the power connection, we need some electrical wire and some ferrules. Pay attention to the polarity on both pad and printer's power supply. On the pad side, the plus and minus are written on the board next to the connector. To secure the pad, we designed the support mount. We will share this one and also a standalone version on Thingiverse, so check the link in the description below. To secure the pad to the mount, we need 4 M3 screws and nuts.
Next is the touch panel. The small flat cable goes through the top side and to the back of the pad. Be very careful when handling this small flat cable. At the back side of the pad, we carefully connect the small flat cable to the pad. Don't forget to push in the lock on the connector. The small heatsink needs to be glued on the main processor which is the big one with the A3 marking on it. And now we connect the power wires to the printer's power supply. Again, pay attention to the polarity. The printer's stock display can be disconnected and removed if you want to. All around the touch panel is some double side tape that we will use to secure it. Make sure the display and panel are clean before you glue the touch in place. We also need some M3 screws and T-nuts to secure the mount to the printer's side profile. With the display installed, you can now peel off the display's protection. Last but not least, connect the USB cable to the printer and to the pad. And the installation is now complete. All we need to do now is turn on the printer. A few seconds later, we see the main screen. Before we can play with all the buttons and menus, we need to set up the connection between the pad and the printer and define some printer parameters. So to do that, we press on Toolbox and then Settings. Here we have all the machine settings. First is the printer's volume. In our case, we will define 320 for the length, 320 for the width, and 400 for the maximum height. Next is the nozzle size. 0 0.4 is OK. X offset is 0 and it's OK. And now we have the connection type. We choose to use the USB cable so USB is OK. Next is timeout. Let's leave it like that. Extruder count is 1 for this printer. Heat bed, yes, it has a heat bed. Next is bed shape. Circular for delta printers or rectangular for the other and the baud rate. This must match your printer's baud rate. For the Neros, we know it's 115 to 100. You can check this value in your printer's firmware or keep changing the value until you get communication running. Next is Y offset, we will leave it at 0, and the server, we will also leave the default one. Light is the display's light intensity, and if you move the screen down, you will access the rest of the settings, which includes the extruder and the bed max and minimum temperatures and access speeds. At the end, we click on Save. The pad also has slicing capability, which means we can load up an STL file and print it directly. In here, you can set up the slicer settings. You have settings in the Basic tab and some more in the Advanced tab. The last tab is for the Start and End G-Code. If you wish to edit them, just touch the line you want and the keyboard pops up. When done, close the keyboard and hit Save. Next is the Wi-Fi menu where you select your Wi-Fi and enter your credentials. The Bind menu is to establish a connection to a smartphone if you decide to install the app for it. In the About menu, you have the information about the system and you can also upgrade the pad software in here. 
to update the software, just copy the upgrade files to the root of the pad's memory card and hit upgrade. After each upgrade, the pad will ask to reboot. And finally, the language, where you select the language you want for the menus. If we go back to the console tab, and if the pad is communicating correctly with the printer, we will see them communicating back and forth. We can also send our own G-code commands to the printer through here. In machine control, we have buttons to move the axes, home the axes, control the temperatures, and push filament in and out. One thing that is missing is a button to disable the motors. And in the Start Printing tab, we can start a print. There are several inputs that we can choose, such as USB, local, which is the pad's memory, SD card, the printer's memory card, and the cloud. So, let's insert our memory card and run a test print. We select SD card and the file we want to print. For the first test print, we use the Ripple Cube STL file. Once loaded, we can see the model preview and some of the basic slicer settings. To start, hit print. In the printing screen, we have the sliced preview with all the layers. And the already printed layers will turn red. If you prefer to use your own slicer, you load the G-code files instead. It's also possible to access the pad inside your network, with your computer or smartphone. To do that, you need to type in the pad's IP address in your internet browser. Most of the menus are exactly the same as the ones on the pad. There's an additional tab called Camera, and we believe it's to get image feed from a webcam when connected to the pad. But we couldn't get the ones we have to work with the pad. The Toolbox tab does not include the settings that we have on the pad. We only have the About button and the Language button. The Language option in here will only change the language of the remote menus. The pad uses Octoprint as base, and you can access Octoprint by typing dash backup123 after the IP address. You can log in by typing MKS in the username and password. The version installed is 1.2.11, which is a very old version. And since the operating system does not have the PIP command, which is used to install packages, we cannot update Octoprint or install plugins on it. We also tested the pad on a Creality Ender 3. Regarding the print results, we printed a Benchy using the pad slicer and using S3D. The printing quality of the pad slicer is inferior as we suspected, since we have just a few parameters available. The ones that we can use, we started with the same values that we have in our S3D profile and this is the best we could get. For the camera, octoprint and plugins installation, we hope MakerBase can fix all that in future software updates. So guys, overall, what do you guys think about this pad from MakerBase? Let us know by leaving your comments down below. And that's it you guys. Thanks for watching and if you like the video, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are not a subscriber yet and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time. Bye!